A living shoreline is a strategy to help protect banks from erosion. What you see over here is a shoreline that's being fortified with concrete armament along there. It's not living, you see it's very sterile. What we want to do is bring back some life into that. And a living shoreline will do that by adding vegetation and accessible organisms like oysters and mussels and things like that that will attach. And that will increase the habitat value so that it's not a sterile environment that's protecting the shoreline. It's now a living, vibrant community. So the plants that live on a living shoreline will fix carbon that will provide food for animals and other microorganisms in the habitat. The animals that live on a living shoreline, such as oysters, will filter the water. Fit the crabs that live on intertidal marsh edges will help replenish the oxygen to the sediments of a live grassy wetland and many other reasons. They sequester more carbon, they help decrease pollutants in a natural system that would not have a shoreline that has rich animals and plants. In order to have a successful living shoreline, some areas might need a combination of hardened structures and biological materials to work well. Others may benefit from just completely biological installations. But I think that's definitely an area where there's a lot of research is focusing on right now to actually figure out what sorts of shorelines work and what sort of habitats. A particular type of living shoreline project that Rutgers and the partnership has been working on for the past several years is a bio-based living shoreline that utilizes mussels and plants because they have a good relationship with each other where the mussels provide nutrients to the plants and the marsh grasses provide habitat for the mussels. And they work together to prevent erosion along the shoreline. After several years of learning from our Living Shorelines project along the Morris River in New Jersey, we recently developed a practitioner's guide that shows each step of installation of this type of muscle-based living shoreline. We typically start out by rolling a mat that's made out of coconut fiber down along a mud flat. Place shell bags in front of the logs to stop mud from moving out from behind the shore. We position 20-foot logs that are also made out of woven coconut fiber and then stuffed with more coconut fiber into an arc shape in front of those mats. We stake those logs in to secure them. And then we wait for some mud to fill in behind these logs and we plant grass that would normally grow there at those elevations and wait for the root structures to take hold to start to solidify that mud and allow some of the plant communities that had been eroding to move back out into these communities that were recently installed. After the grasses are planted into the logs, the next step is to apply the mussels to the logs. We tried several different methods for doing this and the method that we found that works best is to apply the mussels to the core fiber mats in the lab the day before and they attach with their bristle threads on their own. Then we carry the mats out into the marsh and tie the mats with the mussels to the core fiber logs. We also salvage clumps of grasses and mussels from other areas in the marsh that have already eroded and place them behind the logs so the mussels can grow there as well. Living shorelines have a lot of value to them. One of the things that they do is they'll increase the habitat value of that shoreline. So when we put in bulkheads or something else that's hard along the shoreline, that's going to stop that biological activity. And as you do that in one section of shore and another section of shore and another section of shore, pretty soon you're decreasing the environmental value of that whole shoreline. And by using living shorelines, we can maintain that value and create a healthier environment for all of us.